Okay, this video is mainly for beginners, and I'll be going over what I feel would be the best way for a beginner to uh, start working on flakes, what kind of flakes to work on, how thick should they be, what, is, what are your first steps. Uh, I won't go over spalling or obtaining the initial flakes. What I'm going to do is I've got some flakes that I've already chosen to work with. Now, if you um, if you're working with abo tools or natural materials, this video is it's not going to help you all that much uh, because of one thing. When you're into abo. As a beginner, you're going to be going through lots and lots of material. I mean, that's just any beginner is going to, but more so with Aboriginal techniques. And the reason is the failure rate is higher with natural materials than it is with copper or metals or the most modern napping tools that you can get your hands on. I'll be going over that in a different series of videos. Abo techniques are a whole different ball game in my book than using the uh, the modern tools, the copper and the uh, modern abraders and modern rubber pads and all that. Uh, Aboriginal techniques require a lot of patience, a lot of maintenance. Uh, basically a lot more uh, care and, and methodical approach to this. Okay, now I've got a bunch of flakes here from my debitage pile and these are the kind of flakes that a beginner should be working. Now I, this is all Texas chart. Some of it's heat treated, some of it's not. Uh, buying chert online is something that uh, I do recommend and uh, Texas material is pretty cheap so I would recommend that. Any kind of inexpensive material, the, mo the least expensive material you can buy is probably still better than what you could pick up on your own. Uh, try to make sure that it's already you know flaked or spalled. That helps quite a bit. It doesn't have to be. Um, I won't go over spawning like I said, that's a different uh, video, but anyway, thick flakes that are fairly thick, so you won't snap them in half as you begin working. This one's a little on the thin side, especially right here, so I would recommend something like, like this here. It's got one thick area where the bulb of force where the bullet force is right here, we can eliminate that in a little bit. I prefer working relatively thick flakes. And that's been the same way since I was a beginner. Uh, this kind of flake is already very thin and you can use something like this to make a an arrowhead or a bird point quickly. And the, the Native Americans did use these, but most of these were used as is. Uh, it's already sharp, it can be used for lots of different purposes and then when it got dull they just discard it because working on something like this can be extremely frustrating when it snaps in half. It's already too thin uh, in my view. Uh, if you try to run flakes across to try to flatten that out, you, chances are you'll just break the whole thing. Anyway. These are the types of flakes that a beginner should be using. And these are all going to be uh, bird points or arrowheads. Uh, true arrowheads. Now this one here is about an inch wide at the base. Good for hunting. When you're a beginner, uh, try not to match your flakes too closely to the size of the arrowhead. Give yourself some room. That's a little 
little bit too close. Well, I think that'll work. This is about the, the right proportions for copper. For an abo technique, you would need something larger to start with. So if you're going to use abo, I'd, I'd start with something of this size. Uh, and the reason for that is you'll be preparing platforms a lot more uh, with a lot more care when you're doing abo techniques and you lose a lot of width. With copper, the way I'm going to show you, we're going to uh, use a concentration of force and very precise flake removal. So what I would do is uh, the thickest part I would, this is the way I normally do it, the thinnest part, or the most narrow, I mean, is going to be the point. That's the way I usually do it. Well, regardless of how thick it is, the thinnest, I mean, the most pointy area is going to be the point. So I'll start with that as a point. I'll have to shape it. So what we're going to do is uh, begin shaping the, per the perimeter. Sorry about that, I thought I was prepared for that. Okay, put a little more tape on. I just cut my finger looking for that tool. So we're going to shape the perimeter. I'll make this more pointy up here. And all you're going to be doing is not even paying attention to where the platforms are, just striking downward and shaping the, uh, the perimeter. Just simple downward strikes. When we get to a fat area, we're going to uh, use a zigzag technique. We'll skip that for now and just concentrate on shaping what we can shape. Uh, now I get asked a lot where why do I hit in a certain area and not another area or why do I choose the areas that I choose to hit? Like why did I start here and not up here so forth uh, it's very difficult to answer a question like that because making an arrowhead is like uh, putting together a jigsaw puzzle you know you have a strategy you can get the same colors together and put them in a big pile and do the uh, recognizable features first or you can just start Everyone usually starts with the perimeter of the jigsaw puzzle, but why would you want to, you know, there's, uh, during the construction of the jigsaw puzzle, you may start with a, a red color. Why would you choose red instead of blue, you know? Uh, who knows? You just pick a color. Same was same with this. You know, why would I choose here instead of here? Well, I just picked it, you know? There's no real reason you can pick anywhere you want as far as starting. Now, when you attack a problem area like this, you know, why would I start here instead of starting over here? Or do what do I do? Start in, you know, knocking off this here? Or what? How do you decide where to start and what to do? Well, it's like I said, with a jigsaw puzzle, it just depends on, you know, what comes first to your mind start it anywhere. You can start by knocking things off here, knocking things off there, knocking flakes off of here. Uh, in the overall scheme of things, 
You want to flatten this out so you can start by attacking the the highest area first. That's a good strategy. You can start by doing the uh, alternate flaking technique just to get rid of that flat spot and eventually it'll lead to you getting rid of that high spot there. There's no real um, uh, there's no real I don't know how to explain this but when I'm looking at the piece what's going through my head when I examine it is basically nothing. I'm logging in the shape. Curved here, fat here, it's flat here, got a bulb there. I'm just absorbing what the shape is. It's got a ridge here. Okay. After I absorb what the shape is, then I start to process okay, where do I want to remove material? Uh, my own personal preference is I just start attacking the worst areas first. I would start to flake off of this because there's a natural platform there. And that's the first thing that came to my head. I could have just flipped it over this way and say, well, I want just want to get rid of that area and start a, an alternate flaking technique. Either way works. I could use this as a platform, a natural platform, and start striking, hitting flakes off here to remove this bulb. Or I can do an alternate flaking technique to get rid of that. Either way works. There's no better way. There's no... Neither one of those ways is better than the other. Okay. Uh, but the first thing that comes to my head is just the easiest thing. And right here is just start whittling down that bulb of percussion. Or that, In this case it is percussion. until I find that's no longer useful. Uh, if I start getting step fractures or whatever, I'll just switch over to the alternate flaking technique. But the main goal, of course, is uh, you know to flatten that. Now see, there's a strip fracture, so it's a good place to stop, but I don't have to stop. I can keep going. I can just, just you know, shoot flakes in another direction. I can try to remove that step fracture by preparing a platform somewhere and trying to get rid of that. Whichever you feel is most expedient, what you should do. You shouldn't really try to examine the possibilities too much or sit there and think about what I need to do. Uh, at least with not, you know, in my style that's what I do. Otherwise I couldn't be explaining this and napping. I'd be too focused on exactly what should I do next, what is the best spot to hit. I wouldn't be able to explain what I'm doing. I just look around and Whatever feels like a good opportunity, I'll take it. And if it's the zigzag technique, that's what I'll do. I don't think about it all that much. I don't think about the best strategy at all times. I just see what happens. And a lot, sometimes, you know, you can think of a very, very well laid out strategy, a very well planned out series of flakes and then something goes wrong and then what? You have to rethink it. You, know, you could uh, remove way too much. You could have a large step fracture that interferes with your flaking sequence. So my advice is don't overthink it. Just see what happens with different um, approaches and be flexible. So I got rid of that really fat area and I'm going to finish the perimeter. So as a beginner the perimeter is number one. Number two is the very uh, obvious uh, fat areas and then we'll get into thinning once we have that perimeter done. And 
again, I'm just hitting down, not worried about, you know, sending flakes. I am worried about creating step fractures. I don't want to create any, create any. And then uh, once in a while, I'll take your arrowhead and look to see how much room you have. I don't have very much room on the base, so I got to keep that in mind. Take some of that material off. Now the easiest dimension to preserve is your length. The width is the most difficult to preserve. Um, some say thickness is the easiest to preserve. Uh, you may be right about that. So. Thickness is the easiest, then length, and then width. Width is the hardest dimension to preserve. So if you've got not much length, it's okay. Um, assuming you don't snap the tip off. <laughs> okay. So in the beginning, the um, important thing to remember is work on your perimeter. As you're getting thinner and thinner, the priority becomes do not break it. Everything you do in the beginning is shape. After you start getting into it, everything revolves around breakage and fracturing. So stage one is the shape is the perimeter shape. Uh, there, are also, there, there are terms for that. These are the margins or the edges. You can uh, uh, technically you, it's edge work and uh, working on the margins. And right now what I'm doing is uh, shaping the perimeter and sending a few flakes in to reduce that mass more. But you don't have to do two things at once. You can separate your, your technique into different compartments. You can do shaping and then thinning and then shaping and then thinning. Or you can do both at the same time. If you separate it, there's an advantage of doing the operation quicker. Like if I'm just concentrating on perimeter shape, I can send a, a quick series of flakes and be very quick if it works about shaping. Whereas if I was shaping and then pausing to thin, see where the ridges are, and etc., etc. Where am I going to take flakes? It would take longer. So as a beginner, it's probably a good idea to compartmentalize your uh, activities, which means just stick with one thing. Uh, trim, trim, trim to uh, shape it, and then look to see where you can thin it. Uh, I'm abrading because I'm, we're going to be sending flakes into the material across the surface here in a minute. How much width do you think we lose uh, to thin? It depends on how thin it is to begin with, of course. If it's already thin, we're not going to lose much width. The thicker it is, the more width you lose uh, overall. That's not always the case, but it overall that's a good rule of thumb. So this thickness here means we're going to lose some more width at the base because it's more there's more thickness to take care of than we are going to lose at the tip. So you can continue to trim the tip and not worry too much. Right now we don't have very much at all to work with at the base. 
so to thin the base we can't be shooting too many flakes from the sides we'll have to thin from the from down here now as a beginner you may not recognize that you may just trim it real f flat and go uh oh I don't have much width to work with now so you can keep that in mind there's a lot of mass you're going to lose a lot of your perimeter starting to thin so you can keep that in mind and that comes with practice you won't get it in the beginning and it'll be hard to match uh, an example when you're first starting out so don't worry about it it'll if it ends up smaller than your example it's perfectly fine the important thing is to get a basic shape okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start thinning from the base now thinning from the base has there's two main issues to worry about if you hit too hard you could snap the point in the middle so you, we cannot be taking really deep flakes we'll just be whittling it down there's going to be a lot of flakes so we have to be careful about how we prepare our platform we have to be very careful uh, not to remove too much material in preparing platforms and uh, uh, at the beginning of the video I think I mentioned concentration of force so let's just, uh, I'll go over that real quick here. I prefer to, to prepare a continuous platform and not be selective on different areas where I think I should hit. And the reason for that is when you have concentrated force, you don't have to prepare your platforms uh, as well if, as if you had, you know, a large area on the on your uh, tool uh, this type of metal helps to increase your applied force in a small area now there's a lot of very small platforms on here that we can take advantage of now if I was using a different tool with a wider tip I would have to make bigger platforms and that's true with ABO techniques. If you have a large tool head, which in the case, most most of the times that is the case, platforms have to match it. Platforms have to be large or isolated. You can have a very small platform, but it, it needs to be isolated. With copper, it doesn't need to be large or isolated. You can concentrate your force on these very small platforms and remove relatively large flakes. Relatively large flakes because of that concentration of force so I'm going to strike this little bitty platform right here at the very tip and send the flake in and I'll be looking for small platforms all along the edge and I'll flip it over and do the same thing until I've exhausted all my all that I can see and then I'll re, re grind it or braid it again and then do the same thing so let's see. And I took off quite a bit of mass with just a little tiny platform. So I'll move over somewhere where I can see. There's another easy one right here. You gotta keep in mind that hitting at or below center line is best. went pretty far just a very small platform I'll try to catch these flakes when I can I don't know how you, I don't know if you can see how tiny that platform is it's extremely tiny relatively large flake so with concentration of force, the platforms can be small, but the force has to go somewhere, so it, it, it tends to spread out right away. 
and then gives you a nice flat flake in most cases. There's another very small platform there. It could, it might be too abraded and it might not be sharp enough, but I'm going to try it anyway. Yeah. In that case, in this case, I, I I hit too too much inward. So I was supposed to uh, do more of a peeling action on that. I'm going to move over to another platform here. You can see where it's separated and where I hit. See that little void there is basically I hit right below that. Almost on the very edge. Now I've pretty much exhausted my possibilities. There might be one here. Try one more flake into this mass from here. small relatively small platform okay and uh, let me just take off some of this remaining thick edge but what we're going to do is turn it and then start flaking in the other direction a little bit so I'm brushing this way so I can take flakes off that way There's a raised area here that I need to remove. The rest of it looks pretty good. I don't need to remove much at all here, if any. But I do need to remove this, so. And that comes with practice. The angle at which you uh, hold it is practice. You can see we're not use, losing much in terms of width, and it's getting fairly thin. Well, there's another platform there. There's not much mass to remove, so uh, it's, there's no sense in taking a really deep flake, so I'm just going to try to peel a little flake off. Same with the next one. There's not really much material to remove, so I'm just going to very gently taper it. Okay, so comparing there's a little chip taking out right there. It'll bite. So that's going to be the bottom. I'm going to use that as a new uh, base. As, uh, as the base of where this is going to end here. So I'm just going to cut across with some flaking from here. Now I just decided that arbitrarily. I don't have to do it that way. If I don't want to, I could have raised it a little bit more. If I was daring. We don't have much room at all at the tip. So that would be a good spot right there. Just barely gives us enough room. Okay. So what I did was I turned it, at the same time I trimmed it, I turned the edge that way. And I'm brushing this way so we can take flakes this way. And uh, the reason why I did that is 
obviously because we have most of our mass on this side so I need to continue driving flakes across here to remove this mass. And only very small platforms are required. Just trimming. There's still a lot of mass in here. Now I can. It's already a natural area where I could take a, a flag, but you know I could take it now or I can wait until later. There's no right or wrong way to go about that. Just we. The uh, overall goal is just to eliminate that. Okay, so we have our new baseline there. We have a little bit to work with at the tip. Still have some width, so I'm going to go ahead and start removing some of that thickness from the sides. And I'll continue with this here. Uh, I don't have to. I don't have to continue there. I could. Uh, flip it over. There's some areas on the other side I could go. I could uh, thin the tip a little bit first. I could lower this a little bit more. It's at center line or just slightly below all these little platforms on this continuous platform here are, uh, are fairly low so I don't need to do much tur edge turning at all, but you can. You can edge turn it. There's no real right spot to start. I can start on this end or that end. And I'm always hitting right where I see a small platform. I'm driving flakes across when I can, following ridges when I can. Now I can start working on this mass here. I can flip it over and do some more on, on the base. Uh, I can grind this and maybe even send some flakes this way, right here, from the base that way. You know, we have to keep in mind that we don't have much length to work with, so I may not do it that way but it, there's nothing saying I couldn't do it that way we still we're still a little bit convex here so I could abrade that and send flakes in without worrying about losing you know that con that convexity what it will do is it'll bring it down straight we got to bring it down straight anyway so any one of those possibilities is okay but the way I nap, I don't consider all the possibilities first and then make a decision. I just look to see which is the first one that I notice would be a good spot. I don't go around and look at every possibility, although I do go around and examine sometimes and make sure I attack the worst areas first. That's just the, what I do. So to me, this it would be the worst area right here. I don't have to continue going down this edge. I just feel like dressing it up a little bit. Now that I'm here, might as well. Now that I'm 
on this edge. See this flat spot here? I'm going to try to do some alternate flaking on it. But I didn't have to do that. I could still be down here working on this. Now this edge needs to be prepared for sending flakes that way, so I'm going to stop because it's not prepared right now. And look around to see where's the first spot that strikes me as a, a good spot to attack. And I need to remove this mass here, so I might as well take some flakes off of here. edge I see some thick spots here I'm just looking around for the next spot that pops like a good spot to attack. It looks pretty bad here as far as thickness. But I could have looked around some more and said to myself, let's see, uh, the most important thing would be to thin the base right now, thin the tip right now before I start working on the middle. Uh, maybe I would go take a pressure flaker around the entire perimeter and uh, set up a continuous platform all the way around the entire perimeter right now. Uh, instead of just looking for opportunistic platforms, I could be setting up specific platforms for specific areas. Uh, I could be looking at the face and seeing potential problems down the line. Uh, looking for any kind of inclusions or anything like that. It doesn't really matter. what you do uh, your main priority basically right now is the shape and there's a lot of things that can affect the shape and you can analyze as much as you want and then make a decision it's up to you if your brain works in such a way that you have to look at the whole thing multiple times and then come up with a priority or a sequence of steps after looking at the whole thing and registering all the contours then do it that way. If you uh, look at it and you can assess it quickly and just attack where it bugs you, you can do that. Uh, you can also start reducing without even thinking about it. Eventually you'll have to start thinking about the ultimate shape and what will be the best uh, method to go about imitating your your point but when you're doing the initial reduction there are many many different ways to approach it okay so the way I'm thinking right now is there's a lot of You know, there's more platforms I could take advantage of right now, but I would have to take a, a long, a, you know, an extra amount of time to find the ones that won't crush. There's a lot of thin areas. So instead of just going and taking time to do that, I'm just going to abrade the whole edge. See what it looks like. Uh, this look like I should be uh, 
preparing another continuous platform all the way around or can I take flakes off now? What would be the easiest thing for me to do? Well for me the easiest thing right now is just continue working on the perimeter shape. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to straighten out these sides. Now for me, the re to reduce the thickness of the point is not a big deal anymore. There's a little bit of mass there, but it can still be hafted at this point. Even if I did nothing to the thickness, I can still haft it and just work on the edge and then it'll be done. Or I could think to myself, all right, I need to cover this whole surface with flakes in a good pattern. So what would be the best way to do that? Well, I have to turn the edge so the edge would be favoring this side so I can send flakes across. But right now, I'm not worried about any of that. I'm just worried about the overall shape. Now this tip is a little bit off center. So should I get a choice? To, to fix that I could cut some off the base, cut some off of this side and slant the base so that the tip lines up or I can take some off the tip to line it up. I'm going to let the arrowhead decide looks like my best bet is just to uh, move the tip in because the base I don't have much room at all to work with now how much width am I going to lose well, it's not that thick so I'm not going to lose very much so I can come pretty close to the final shape without worrying too much what I tried to do is to set up a little platform and take some of that off but it didn't work very well so it's bugging me right now I'm going to go ahead and attack it but again, I don't have to do that. I could continue to be working on the perimeter and, and uh, building a continuous platform very carefully everywhere and then come back to that. But I'm going to do this first because it's bugging me right now. Okay, this little area right here is bugging me. better. So I've increased the symmetry this way and that way. I'll just continue with the uh, platform preparation. The continuous platform, it's, it's a little bit jaggedy right now so I'm going to take a pressure flaker and uh, set up a, a good continuous platform for a final pass. Now, there's not much option at that point. What else could you do at this point? Uh, except set up a continuous platform all the way around and then do a final pass. Well, as you get toward the end of the point, uh, close to finishing it, your options decrease. So, basically my only option now, there's two things. 
I could thin the base and do the notches and then worry about the blade later or do the whole blade now and then do the notches uh, I could work on the tip first some people like working on the tip to develop the uh, shape of the tip first before working on the base I prefer working on the, the, uh, the overall blade itself first before working on either the tip or the base and then when I get the overall uh, surface done I prefer the base first and then the tip last but it, can, it doesn't have to be that way you could do it any way you want uh, the reason why I leave the tip for last though is because I have a habit of snapping off tips by accident so I'll leave it rather thick at this point so I won't do that in theory <laughs> okay so I was going to uh, go around the whole thing do a continuous platform for a final pass I didn't like it. Uh, I don't have to start at the base. I can start anywhere I want. I just I don't know why I'm starting here. I'm just it looks like a good spot. looked look like a good spot probably wasn't the best that uh, the area was difficult to flake same with this it's a little difficult to flake you know it might have been better to start from the other direction I didn't make an assessment on the whole perimeter to see where would be the best place to start just went ahead and started driving flakes to thin although I could be I could be doing two things at once I could be thinning and adjusting the uh, continuous platform but I'm just basically dressing up the edge for the continuous platform not doing any uh, thinning right now and that's just my preference. I'll do my thinning on the uh, final pass. But you could also, um, you know, thin right now and make your final pass that much simpler. You wouldn't have to remove as much material or as many flakes, which might be a better strategy, but right now my strategy is just to uh, set up a continuous platform I like doing one final pass mainly because there's less thinking <laughs> now why do I keep flipping over and over uh, because I want the continuous platform to be right at the exact center line so I flip it over where I see an area that needs to be moved and I'm not abrading why, you know, why am I not abrading well these flakes are just uh, being popped off in a downward motion there's not much platform preparation needed for that so even though I may be getting a little, getting a little bit of crushing in there it's not a big deal because once I do the abrading, a lot of that crushing won't matter. The, abrade, the abrader will even those out a little bit. It's not the perfect strategy, but uh, with a concentration of force, like I was talking about earlier, your platforms don't need to be perfect, and they can be very small. So if there's a little bit of crushing in one area, I just move over a little bit and avoid the crushing. Whereas if you're using a larger tool, there's not much of an option 
uh, in some cases and you have to get rid of the crushing in order to prepare a platform wide enough for your tool. But with a concentration of force, you can take advantage of small platforms, which are a lot more numerous than large platforms. Okay. So I'm just aligning that edge to the exact center line. As close as I can, try to get it as close as I can. Without taking too much time, I could be extremely careful and make it, you know, almost perfect. But I don't do it that way. I don't feel the need to be overly careful if you wanted to develop a very uh, very consistent pattern then yes you would need to be a lot more careful you would need to remove some of these little bumpy areas and have a very smooth surface you may even want to go ahead and take this on to a grinder and grind it smoother so that your final pass will look very consistent and you won't have to uh, do any damage control in case one one of your flakes uh, steps on an obstacle and then you have to try to clear it from the other side or whatever that's what I call damage control clearing your obstacles before moving on so um, I mean you can abrade the surface a little bit I usually don't but a lot of guys do before the final pass it does help remove a lot of those minute fingernail step fractures when you abrade the surface it helps to pop those out It's not that important to remove, you know, extremely thin ones. They don't interfere very much. But if you have a, a major step fracture like right there, it'd be best to try to remove that before doing the uh, final pass. And the, the way I get rid of those is just to try to catch them and knock those off with the, with the flaker. See, I caught the edge of that and... Uh, took that off and now I'm just hitting down the remnants of that step so everything looks pretty smooth I grind the whole edge because it is a continuous platform if I was being selective, I wouldn't grind the whole edge. I'd just be selecting different platforms individually. But I like creating continuous platforms because it's easier. And, uh, you know, some guys would say, well, what happens to those dull areas that you don't hit? You just come back with a retouch and uh, eliminate those areas by popping off small flakes and sharpening it. Okay, so I'm just going to start from here. And that was the first place that I thought looked good. I could start from the base and do my final pass by starting from the base. It doesn't matter too much. Um, technically, if you wanted to start in a, in a place that would minimize breakage, you start with the base and send flakes inward. I was going to start at the tip because it was the first spot that I noticed, but if I assess the situation and look around, and it looks like the base is probably the best place to start and eliminate this mass here. While everything is still fairly thick, so I don't have to come back and try to eliminate that mass when everything is thin, because then 
hitting on the base causes some vibrations that may snap off your tip if it's too thin. Okay, so uh, let's start with the base. There's a crest area, I'm just going to move over a little bit. I'm scratching it back to make sure that platform is strong. I was a little bit aggressive with that because I wanted to remove a large flake, but it didn't travel very far. Not a problem. There was a step fracture here, which didn't allow me to uh, to continue with that flaking, so I could regrind that platform and try again. Uh, but usually, I don't do that, and that's just my own personal preference. I'll come back to that later. I'll look, I'm looking around to see where else I can do the final pass. Instead of having to be bogged down by, oops, I gotta fix that now. I'm just gonna go ahead and do the rest of it. No particular sequence because I'm not really trying to imitate a certain point style. I just want to get this shape. We're very close, so the final pass is gonna give us very close to our final shape. And uh, I'm just going to do it in a random fashion wherever I see a good platform and a good area to remove a, a flake. That's where I'm going to hit. And the larger the flake that's needed, the more aggressive the strike. And if the platform doesn't look like you can handle an aggressive strike, I either move over to an area that can or I'll just regrind it. And that one I, I didn't put the tool far enough on the uh, platform. The danger here is moving, I mean removing too much and taking it off the other side. I've got to be very careful about overshots. Now, I mean, I am spacing these flakes in a regular interval uh, because that's just out of habit now. I could be going up and down the blade looking for good spots, but I'm I'm just I'm methodically going down the down the blade, down the edge. But I could be doing it randomly too. Okay, so that looks good enough. I'll flip it over. Uh, does it matter where I start next? Should I, you know, try to match up these flakes now or later? It doesn't really matter. Uh, what does matter is that there's not much of a platform preparation. I mean, there's not much of a. Uh, in, in, on this edge here, there's not, not many areas that I can use to remove flakes here, so I need to prepare another continuous platform to remove flakes in the other direction. I could take advantage of some of these, like there's a platform here, I could use that to remove a flake there. just want to show you if it'll work. Yeah. I can take advantage of some of the platforms that are here, but it's more difficult to do that than to prepare another continuous platform. So this area here that's 
sticking out it really bugs me so I'm going to attack that first somehow and I work my way down the edge tried to get that from here and it didn't work so I'm going to try to get it from right here you can see that platform is very small very very small There's a lot of small platforms that you could take advantage of. That's why I prefer the uh, the hard uh, percussion flaker, the copper especially. And I've been looking for materials that will match the copper and I can find materials that will match it. The problem is the maintenance on the material. A lot of the uh, hard natural materials are brittle and after one or two flakes you've ruined the bit or ruined the material. And it either has to be uh, dressed or replaced. So one point could take you a considerable, <coughs> sorry, considerable amount of time uh, with natural materials. Okay, so I've, I've got a step fracture there. Uh, I want to go ahead and see if I can remove that little booger area right now. And I'm brushing, <coughs> excuse me, trying to brush that away, but it's not working, so I'm going to see if I can come in from the base. Now, I don't have to do that right now. I could be doing something else and then come back later, but I want to do it now. It's just bugging me. I may have to lose some width to take care of that. I have a little bit of width. So I'll wait. Come back to it. What I'm going to do now is turn the edge for uh, pass two passes on the other side. So I'm going to turn both edges a little bit by brushing in the opposite direction. I'm brushing this way so I can take flakes this way. And the, you know the step that I created a continuous platform makes it kind of nice because uh, all I need to do is brush it, and then it'll, since it's already pretty straight, I don't have to do much other than brushing it. Okay. Just working down the edge, taking small opportunistic uh, strikes on small opportunistic platforms. And through experience I can tell where they are. As a beginner it may be difficult for you to see the platforms. Just wherever there's a dull area that looks pretty strong, that's sticking out, is a good platform. Now, this is kind of random. I'm just going to the 
worst areas, but you could do this sequentially also. Now that one was difficult to remove. The platform was really strong, so I changed the angle. Eventually it'll come off. Uh, peeling off is the easiest way, so uh, eventually it got to the angle where it just a peeling off motion. I didn't really get to send a large or a long flake there, but I might be able to now. Yeah, a little bit better. made an error this uh, as I was holding it and I ended up striking the, the uh, edge with the with the uh, billet with the mallet but it's not going to uh, affect it too much still have some width left The error got me a little bit frazzled, so I'm kind of losing my focus here. See if I can get rid of that problem area now. Wondering if I should even worry about it. Yeah, I've got a little bit of room to work with. Yeah, that's not too bad. Want to get rid of that step somehow, so. just need to pop it out of there I don't need to I ended up eliminating the whole thing but I just needed to pop that out of there okay so the edge is thin enough I think for just a final retouch maybe with the pressure flaking will get rid of some of that boogery area that I made a mistake on there the pressure flaking will certainly take care of that error and then I can notch it. It's already an hour and eight minutes so uh, I'm gonna leave it here like that. I think you guys can get the idea on what to do from here. The edge is pretty pretty much done. I just need to do some final retouch to get rid of that defect. Point is a little bit off, off center. So I'm just going to dress that up. Do 
just pushing flakes off, not really paying attention to thinning it. Dimensions are the same. This one here, uh, I ground the tip on this one to make it stronger. I'll get into the, that kind of thing in a different video. But uh, you guys get the idea, I hope. 